Good afternoon, families, friends, students, and guests. Welcome to the Morden Collegiate Graduation Ceremony for the 2019-2020 school year. This is a very special day in the lives of our graduating students. We are so glad that you are here to share in the recognition of their accomplishments. Before we get started today, we'd like to quickly review a few safety points regarding our specific venue here tonight. The following guidelines should be followed by patrons, volunteers, and staff of the Stardust Theatre as per provincial guidelines and to respect the business owners of the Stardust Theatre. You must remain in your vehicles only exiting for essential purposes, such as the use of the washroom. In the case where you must leave your vehicle, physical distancing must be observed at all times. Other than to use the washroom facilities, graduates and their families are asked to remain in their vehicles for the duration of the convocation ceremony. Vehicles must be separated by a minimum of two meters, and while windows and sunroofs may be open, doors and trunks should remain closed. It is a great gift to be able to be together to watch this convocation please ensure that you follow the rules in place to allow us to do it safely. We are now ready to welcome our graduates. Thank you. 
My name is Tanya Sigurdsson, and I am the Vice Principal of Morden Collegiate. And I am Tyler Sloan, Guidance Counselor at Morden Collegiate, and we will be your Masters of Ceremonies for this evening. As we start our ceremony today, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge that the Western School Division operates on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and the Dakota peoples. The Western School Division respects the treaties that were made on this territory. We would like to first welcome Morden Collegiate's principal, Marianne Fenn, to begin our ceremony with her greeting to guests and graduates. Hello, graduates, families, and supporters. We welcome you to our graduation celebration for Morden Collegiate for the year 2020. I would like to take a moment right at the beginning of my words to you today to wish a fond remembrance of one of your class of 2020 classmates, Roxy Martins. We lost Roxy tragically in April and the feeling of that loss has reverberated through our words, actions, and thoughts since. We wish Roxy's friends and family strength. Our thoughts and prayers are with you and we thank everyone for keeping her memory in your hearts. Today, you are welcome to our special graduation ceremony this evening, being celebrated today in this very unique way here at the Stardust Drive-In Theatre. We are here today instead of at our Access Event Centre, as we would traditionally have been, because the world has dealt us an unprecedented set of cards this year. I feel like, even as we started to hear about the mysterious virus known as COVID-19, that we didn't really have the ability to fathom the degree of impact that it would have on our lives, on how we would operate a school, on how we would live and learn, and simply how we would function in our world day to day. I think that things might have sounded, that might have sounded preposterous to us, a week or two later suddenly became a reality. And then those same things became even what we might consider a new normal within a very short period of time. One of those things that even six month ag months ago we couldn't have fathomed was that our ability to celebrate the amazing accomplishments of our graduates would be transformed into something that had to look completely different from what we had ever known before. I know it is easy to think of what we are missing out on right now, to think of the things that we don't have or can't have today. We're very sorry for all the things that cannot be because of COVID-19. But I'm hoping that for right now, we can look at things a little bit differently and focus at least as much on what we are able to do today. Maybe we can rebrand and redefine the idea of 2020 vision. Having 2020 vision typically means that a person has normal visual acuity. It means that what you can see from 20 feet away is the same as what a person with normal vision would see from that same distance away. For the group of us here today, I wish that 2020 vision could mean our ability to see with a different kind of acuity. Our 2020 vision gives us the clarity to be able to see the possibilities in situations, the positives in situations, and the ability to see the potential solutions to the difficulties and obstacles placed before us. No matter what your eyesight is like, we can all choose to have this kind of 2020 vision. So putting on our 2020 vision glasses, we can hopefully see and appreciate that today we're together. Today we are innovating when life has tossed us an unexpected, unwelcome and unwanted obstacle. Today we are persevering, even in difficult circumstances. Today we are focused on celebrating the people and the achievements that are important. Today, we're making sure that others near us in our families and in our community have a better chance of being safe, even if it means making a personal sacrifice. Earlier, I said that we can all choose to have this kind of 2020 vision. As you step forward, graduates, into whatever the world offers you next, you will have a lot of opportunities to decide how you will choose to see the world. Will you focus on what is missing or what is there? Will you be cynical? or optimistic? Will you make the best out of challenging moments or will you feel defeated by them? Will you see the easy way or will you step up to tougher and more difficult paths to put your marks on the world? A long time ago, 
probably when I was about 20 years old, just to keep up with the 2020 theme. I remember having had the good fortune to spend an afternoon out with my dad. We went for lunch, we had the opportunity to play a few games of pool together. I wasn't very good at the game of pool, and I'm still not really. I only play occasionally, and without the real game sense or sport acuity to really be able to, be, to do a good job while playing the game. My dad, on the other hand, he was pretty good. He didn't play all that often either, but he would chalk up his ability to be successful as the benefits he gained from what he would teasingly refer to as his misspent youth. Anyway, on this afternoon, I recall playing for a while and that I would gleefully cheer delightedly for myself when it would be my turn to shoot next and when I managed to every once in a while sink a single ball here or there. Typically, this would only happen by some fluke when the cue ball was lined up perfectly with a solid, which was also lined up perfectly with a corner pocket, and there was nothing to get in the way of my successful shot. I would take a simple shot like that, make it, and then brag about my expertise like I had invented the game of pool immediately after making this basic kind of kindergarten shot. Inevitably, I would miss the next shot because there would be no more easy shots left. And when the turn switched to my dad's, <clears throat> he'd set about to sink three or four or five stripe balls in a row, one after the other, clearly demonstrating the real expertise that it took to play that game correctly. At one point, I sort of whined to him about how terrible I was <laughs> and how little opportunity I even had to play because he just kept sinking ball after ball after ball without me even getting much of a return opportunity to play. How do you do that every single time, Dad? I said, frustrated. In the moment, he said the following, and I'm not sure if he was trying to be a, phil a philosopher or if it was just coincidence, but I've always remembered it. He said, Mary, when you play pool, you focus too much on the shot you have in front of you and not enough on what you leave behind for the next shot. It's not what you get, it's what you leave behind that's important when you're playing the long game. I've thought about that simple moment a lot of times over the years, not so much because of the game of pool, but because of the message in those words. They come back and they fit into so many of life's situations. I think my dad was encouraging me to use that kind of 2020 vision that we're talking about today. Even though it might have been about a game, I think that what he was saying is that it's important to problem solve. It's important to see that the easy path isn't always the one that is the most sustainable in the long run. That sometimes you sacrifice an easy shot at something so you can have a bigger gain in the long run that focusing only on the moment without thinking about what comes next might lead to a quick bit of excitement, but it isn't necessarily sustaining. Graduates, along with the content in all of your classes you're taking this semester, having had to figure out how to be flexible and adaptable and how to deal with adversity is the kind of 2020 vision that each of you have the opportunity to gain this year. The easy thing to do is to complain to quit or to give up or to stop trying. The trick shot here is to figure out how to use the situation you found yourself in now and how to learn the most from it that you can so that the skills gained here and now will continue to support and to reinforce your strengths for years and years to come. Most of you are 17 and 18 years old. You've had an experience this year unlike any that your parents or grandparents have ever had until now themselves. You have faced adversities that are huge. You have persevered. You have succeeded. We have innovated together. We are proud of you graduates. We know that you have had to make sacrifices. We know that there is a world of opportunities around the corner for you. We join you in using our 2020 vision to see the possibilities in what is yet to come. Congratulations to you, class of 2020. We would now like to introduce Brian Franson, Chair of the Western School Division Trustees, to bring greetings on behalf of the board. Good evening. My name is Brian Franson, and I am the Chair of the Board of Trustees in Western School Division. The other trustees are Robin Weep, Barb Petkow, David Gunther, and Darcy Wolf. On behalf of the board, I would like to welcome everybody to Grad 2020. What a special celebration we have in store for you. Staff, parents, and volunteers have put countless hours into creating the most unique graduation ceremony that we have ever seen. Of course, it won't be the same as what you were expecting when you walked through the front doors of the school in September of 2019, 
It isn't what anybody was expecting. But here we are. And if you go back a few years to when you walked through the front doors of your school in September of 2007, a commitment was made to you. Whether you realize it or not, members of the community, teachers, EAs, support staff, and your parents and families all rallied around you, committed to work with you through highs and lows, successes and failures, from the excitement of kindergarten through to the stubbornness of adolescence. And here you are. And the last couple of months have possibly been some of the most difficult for all the wrong reasons. A valuable lesson for each of us is that learning doesn't stop after graduation. We are all in the midst of perhaps the largest scale cross-curricular multinational project-based learning initiative ever attempted by humankind. Without question, the details of the future are uncertain. But even in the most uncertain times, you can find something consistent to focus on. In Western School Division, we say we are rooted in caring, committed to learning. That doesn't change with the seasons or whether you are learning from home or in the classroom. It is a commitment we make to you when you are a part of our community. Regardless what the future brings, know that you have the tools to find your success. Getting here is not easy. Not everybody does it. You have. Where will you go next? We would now like to introduce greetings from the Honourable Cameron Friesen, MLA for Morden Winkler, and the Minister of Health, Seniors and Active Living. Hi Morden Collegiate graduates, my name is Cameron Friesen. I'm the member of the Legislative Assembly for Morden Winkler and the Minister of Health for the province of Manitoba. I say congratulations to you. This is an odd year to be a grade 12 student and to be graduating. It's not the year that you thought you would have. You were sent home, your classes were cancelled, you couldn't finish things like sports or your arts events or take your final exams. That might have been okay for you. But you are graduating and it is an incredible moment in your lives and you should celebrate it well. So as your MLA, congratulations on behalf of our government, best wishes for this summer and beyond. You deserve uh, to be graduating. You deserve to have this recognized in a big way. Congratulations, Felicitations, class of 2020. Hello, I'm Brent Rusin, Manitoba's Chief Provincial Public Health Officer. And I'm Lynette Siragusa, Chief Nursing Officer with Shared Health. Today we're extending all the best wishes to students who are celebrating differently this year, especially those graduating in 2020. You have worked hard for this moment through unprecedented times and your graduation is a wonderful achievement. While COVID-19 may have changed the way you celebrate this year, we hope you're able to celebrate with the people you love. We also want to extend our thanks to the teachers and the parents who have helped shape your lives and your learnings. You are our future leaders. We know you'll continue to grow and inspire us. You have so much to offer to the community, the province, and the world. Never stop being curious, try new things, do your best every day, be great. All Manitobans are proud of you. Congratulations. Congratulations. An important tradition at graduation has one member of the graduating class validating the graduation for all his or her peers by delivering a speech known as the valedictory address. It is an incredible honor to be selected by your classmates to represent them as class valedictorian. Over the past four years at Morden Collegiate, many staff and her fellow students have identified her as a leader in the classroom, on student council, athletic teams, and in the community. She led by example for her peers and would always model what expectations were for a class, giving more than the standard expectation. During spirit weeks and grade wars, she was constantly encouraging students to take part and get involved with the activities and could be seen sporting blue face paint alongside fellow classmates on grade challenge days. She was elected as the student body president this year and was the voice for the students as the youth member of the Morden City Council. Here she was able to give input and feedback on matters related to the city from the youth perspective. She volunteered on the organizing committee for the National Student Debate Seminar 
that hosted over 100 people from across Canada here last September. She was involved in Celtic dance in Winnipeg, and I also had the pleasure of coaching her on the girls' soccer team this year. Her humor, positive attitude, and support of her fellow teammates, along with her competitiveness and drive to succeed, were as good as any student athlete that I've had the pleasure of coaching. She accomplished all these things while maintaining an academic average in the category of honours with distinction for four straight years. To quote Mr. Mike McRaig, there are many leaders of tomorrow. Molly Wheeler is a leader of today. Bienvenue majeur de promotion de Morden Collegiate pour 2020. Please welcome Morden Collegiate's 2020 class valedictorian, Molly Wheeler. Good evening, graduates, parents, teachers, and community members. Well, it's safe to say nothing looks the way we thought it would this year, including this very speech, which had to be previously recorded. And while I would love nothing more than to be standing in front of you all in person today, I'm incredibly touched and grateful that I have been given the honor of representing my class as valedictorian. When I sat down to write this speech, I struggled with where to begin. The trouble wasn't that I had a lack of ideas. It was that there are so many important things to say about this amazing group of individuals that I didn't know how to narrow it down. I believe in my heart that MCI's class of 2020 is special. Maybe every valedictorian stands up here saying that, but I think this class truly is remarkable. We have spirit. What other class can say they won grade wars in grade nine? You're supposed to get annihilated as freshmen and yet we dominated and won again in grade 10 and 11 too. And the sweep in grade 12 proved that it wasn't fluke. It wasn't just talent or strength either. It was our ability to show up. Our grade never fails to show up with our best foot forward, excelling in so many areas. The honor roll and honor roll with distinction lists for our grade were always double the length of any other. The lists of dance attendees were always comprised of mainly our grade. On sports teams, even as the younger grade, we had more players and our choirs bands, drama productions, and clubs consisted of many of our grade participating enthusiastically. I believe it is this willingness to show up that has made us stand out. This hasn't gone unnoticed by those who have watched us grow up. Our parents are supposed to think we're special no matter what, but our teachers are not obliged to make the comments that they have. Even back in elementary school, our teachers said they were excited to see where we would go. And in grade eight, we were told that we were one of the kindest grades to pass through those halls. In high school, we have worked hard to bring to light the value of school spirit and participation at Morden Collegiate, setting an example for the grades following us, something our teachers have recognized and valued. We have appreciated the numerous remarks about what a well-rounded, compassionate, caring, and unique group of students we are. In the spirit of that compassion and care, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge a member of this group, Roxanne Martins, better known to our grade as Roxy. It didn't take being a close friend of hers to recognize her big smile from down the hall or to turn at the joyous and contagious sound of her laugh from the back of a classroom, or to see the love and connection that her friend group shared with each other. Our grade is made up of many tight-knit friend groups that have always seemed to weave together seamlessly. And for this reason, the loss of a beautiful graduate, classmate, and friend affects everyone here. Roxy was, still is, and will always be part of Morton Collegiate's class of 2020, and we remember her today and forever.
Graduation marks the end of an era and is a symbol of entering adulthood and the next phase of life. This process requires the graduate to embody adaptability and resilience. And let me tell you, COVID-19 has ensured that the class of 2020 has fine-tuned these skills. This year, we were met with the suspension of in-person classes and school activities, the difficulty of transitioning to online learning, and the disappointment of grad being different than what we had envisioned. I would like to share a quote that Ms. Sigurdsson sent me when I was disappointed in myself at a debate tournament. The measure of our success is the ability to persevere in the tough times. That is when we learn the most. Our grade must be learning a lot. We must have a lot of success in our future because this year we have persevered. We have had to adapt to a new normal for most of second semester and confront all sorts of crazy life changes way ahead of schedule. It would have been easy to give up and it would have been easy to feel miserable today. Yet, here we are, as together as we can be, doing our best to celebrate our hard work and achievements from the past 13 years. We are making the most of the special event that has been created for us. We are showing up, just as we did all through high school, and just as I know we will continue to do moving forward. Some of us will head off to university or college right away, while others have already started working and will move up the company ladder. Many will find success with a trade, some will pursue athletics or the arts, or you may find yourself couch surfing until you figure out a plan. As we head off into the future, I want you to keep in mind that there is no right way to live your life, and there is no timeline that you must follow. You are not late. As long as you have shown up, you are exactly where you should be. Unless it's 1.32 and physics started at 1.30, then you are most definitely late and you're likely locked outside of Mr. Dirksen's classroom. Do not fear, though. You can always wander over to Mr. Boucher's room to watch a quick episode of Animal Planet or Mr. Schellenberg's if the Thunder Hockey highlight reel is more your style. Seriously, though, all of the staff here at MCI have a lot to offer, and they have spent the last four years working to connect with us and teach us all that they could in our short time here. This goes beyond the lessons on the smart boards that always seem to need recalibrating, or all of the PowerPoints made in Mr. St. Jean's classes, and even Mr. Tabe's famous research papers. Mr. Chiapetta taught us to wash our hands periodically, which has proven more useful in the past few months than he probably ever knew it would. Beyond that, he encouraged us to get excited. And he, along with our other teachers, pushed us to do things that were outside of our comfort zones. Because in his famous words, it builds character. From Mrs. Taves dating advice, to Mrs. Kalinowski's life advice, to the required classroom material, I'd say they covered it all. Which means we are ready to take the next steps in our lives, whatever they may be knowing that we are well prepared thanks to our inspiring teachers, supportive families, and an engaged and involved community. So to my fellow classmates, as we leave Morden Collegiate embarking on our new and separate journeys, I want to thank you all for showing up. Showing up academically, athletically, and socially for each other for the past four years. Not only that, but I want to encourage you to show up in every aspect of your lives in the future. Don't wait to know where you are going before you start your journey. Sometimes to get started, you have to take a chance. So here's to taking the chance of showing up every single time. Please join me in congratulating the class of 2020, the class that shows up. To make your graduation official, we now have the honor of presenting the diplomas and at the same time recognizing our school award winners. To assist you in understanding the various certificates and awards, here is a brief explanation of what each represents. 
Honor Roll with Distinction recognizes students graduating with an average mark of 90% or higher. Honor Roll recognizes students graduating with an average mark of 80% or higher. Subject awards are presented to students who are recognized for academic achievement and superior attitude in individual courses. Spirit Awards recognize students for their time and energy in making school activities successful. This may be through leadership, enthusiasm, and or commitment. It includes athletic competition. Merit Awards recognize students for outstanding involvement in school activities not including athletics. This is a very prestigious award as only four students in grade 11 and 12 combined are able to receive this distinction. Scholarships that students receive had their own specific criteria for awarding and monetary amounts varied based on the award sponsor. As many of you know, this year's convocation ceremony looked much different than any of us expected. Due to our global pandemic and the recommendations given by our chief medical officer, we were not able to gather as we typically would. Instead, the staff at Morden Collegiate came up with an alternative plan that allowed for the required social distancing and an epic whirlwind five-day event filming. Mr. McRaig and Ms. Hoytink dedicated time and artistry to bringing your graduating class together, even if only virtually. It also included the organizing and delivering of the grad package with caps and gowns and lawn signs to allow the community to recognize your achievements. Staff at Morden Collegiate on their first day back at school spent the day prepping for your convocation. The Webster's Dictionary defines to convocate as to call together. Tonight, we call together for the first time in months, the Morden Collegiate Class of 2020. Donna Karen Molina Emma Yuyutan. Ron Robin Santos Antonio. Miguel Angel Ardila Gavira. Kimberly Shania Avila Medrano. Elena Barabash Tony Barch Dante Dennis Andrew Bebo Sophia Biz Caleb Dufton Blythe (laughs) 
Andrew Braden Boucher. Emily Michelle Brower. Cameron Dion Brune. Samuel Cardoso Salibi. Kelby Mark Carson. Danielle Lee Chapman. Isabelle Lucien Cherrier. Kirill Chirikov. Trinity Lynn Jane Chapea. Brody Alexander Clyde. Cassidy Everin Curry. Kyle Roderick Douglas de Montmorency. Joshua Allen Caringal Dato. Joshua William Dick. Rylan Didkowski. Connor Grayson Dick. Logan Andrew Pankwich Dick.
Seth Daniel Dick. Stephanie Irene Elias. Rachel Kennedy Elias Miller. Meadow Ruth Evans Phrase. Faith Elizabeth Rose Friesen. Abigail Anka Barbara Fraze. Benjamin Walter Giesbrecht. Jasmine Bailey Jeanette. Ryland Earl Gertson. Katerina Golubovka. Reese Tanner Graham. Paige Alexandra Grift. Damien Dalton Peter Ginter. Joseph Robert Hernandez. Morgan Ceylon Hebert. Adam Nicholas Brian Hildebrand.
Allison Sarah Lynn Hildebrand. Allison Anna Marie Hildebrand. Brendan Reed Hildebrand. Robin Victoria Hildebrand. Michael Howard Halady. Justin Clayton Hobbs. Brooklyn Renee Hepner Caius Duncan Ballard Hunt Emma Sydney Hines Alexander Wayne Kelly Irvine Belinda Isaac Irina Ivanova Jade McKenna Yonison Evgeny Karpov Wasim Kossum Jens Kebernek Alexander Cole Clausen
Emily Jane Clausen. Jonas Cranert, Ashlyn Stefani Krop, Yulia Kwandakova. William Morris Labonte Rance Leonard Castro Laos Wade Alexander Lumgear Samantha Caroline McCrimmon Helen Douglas Lane McPherson Jervin Masunke Manyunglung Catherine Manyunglung Masunke Tia Callie Eve McKnight Matthew James Clifford Morasti Violetta Alina Metzler Christian J. Ross Miranda Montoya Lila Yarivna Navratska Kenneth Logan Alexander Newdorf
Lorenz Neufeld. McKenna Brianne Nichols. Ruby Louise Otenizai. Siddhi Rajesh Parikh. Nathan Christian Payne. Jonah Davies Penner. Seth Hunter Reese Penner. Bradley Wyatt Peters. Brendan Tyler Peters. Katrina Dawn Peters. Jaden Memphis Peters Ackerson. Sonia Ella Marie Prokopetz. Seth Phoenix Rock. Carolina Alfonsina Rangel Hernandez. Savannah Rose Redekop. Mm -hmm. 
Victoria Grace Reimer. Tyra Jade Richards. Abigail Alice Robb. Fabian Sachs. Jasmine Melanie Sachs. Owen Matthew Sager. Megan Elizabeth Colleen Sandercock. Carly Rain Schiller. Jenny Schimpf. Caitlin Rose Schmidke. Rosalie Schott. Da he saw. Dmitry Sharapov. Jordan Diane Sigurdsson. Aaron Carlo Bellin Soriano.
Owen Reese story. Taylor Shaylin Suderman. Zeph William Suderman. Jamie Alexis Tanous. Benjamin Turrier. Simon Frederick Theobald. Tori Lane Thiessen. Thomas James Tichkowski. Devin Nicole Isabella Taves. Delaney Rita Tugas. Rojame Tenadero Troncoso. Mamadou Momo Toure. Aisha Umar. Muhammad Hamayun Umar. Jackson Wayne Unra. Thomas William Viale. (laughs) 
Noah Edmund Vincent. Vadim Vorobayev. Amber Joelle Waldner. Jonathan David James Wall. Josiah Daniel Ward. Tyson Newman Whale. Molly Ray Wheeler. Abriana Mackenzie Widmer Abigail Lynn Weeb Derek Riley Weeb Taryn Sage Weeb Jennifer Witt Tristan Matthew Wood Eaton Marcus Worley Cole Kenneth Reddig Zweep
Bonjour tous les dip diplômés. Nous sommes vraiment fiers de vous tous. Cette année, pour la première fois, nous avons les étudiants qui vont recevoir euh, le diplôme d'immersion français. Ça, c'est vraiment fantastique. La connaissance des de langues additionnelles ouvre les portes de beaucoup d'opportunités. Bravo et félicitations. It is hard to believe that I'm standing here speaking to you at your graduation. It seems like it was just yesterday that I was saying goodbye to you at the end of grade eight and sending you off to head high school. This year has been a crazy year. If anybody had told us how the school year would have ended, we would have said they were crazy and not have believed it. And yet, here we are. Many people have had to cancel very important life plans. Others have had to make really tough choices as to who can attend special events in their lives and who have to remain in other places. All of us have had to limit our social contact with people, family and friends that matter the most to us. And yet here we are, and as you grads know, all too well, students who are graduating this year no longer have the opportunity to have the grad that they anticipated and really wanted. All of this is very upsetting, huge disappointment, and let's be honest, basically just sucks. And that's all true. However, I would encourage you to remember one very important thing. As tough as all this has been and continues to be, you made it. You have more than survived. You have succeeded. You are here today as graduates. You have completed high school and are ready to take on a new set of challenges. You are moving forward, knowing that when life throws you a curveball, you can handle it. When times get rough, and unfortunately they always do, you, can, you now know that you can persevere and succeed. That knowledge is huge. A good and fulfilling life isn't often an easy life. Rather, a good and fulfilling life is gained from knowing that you are the author of your story. You can affect the quality of your life. COVID-19 changed a lot of things, but don't let the limitations of COVID-19 define your graduation or more importantly, you. As a matter of fact, in spite of COVID-19, you have been successful. You are resilient and you've got what it takes to create the life you want. Don't ever forget that. Resiliency will get you through the toughest of times. In life, we have to deal with a lot of things that are totally out of our control, as COVID-19 has taught all of us. However, we can control how we deal with it. As Charleston, Charleston Parker said, we have three choices. We can give up, we can give in, or we can give it all that we've got. If you hit an unexpected obstacle or roadblock that you really can't do anything about, give up. Give up railing in anger against it. Give up asking, why me? Why did this happen to me? Give up asking or demanding that it's not fair or what debating whether it is fair. Give all of that up because honestly, there was no reason why it happened to you. And you're right, it isn't probably fair. However, by staying in that position, you are robbing yourself of opportunities to find joy. And it takes a lot of energy to be angry and live in the world of defeat. So give all that up and choose to be happy. In life at times, we need to put other needs first. At times, we will find people who need us to stand up for them and with them in difficult times. At these times, give in. Give in, let go of advocating for your position or staying steadfast to your, to your side of an argument and instead choose to give in and fill their basket. That is the best time to give in. You will happen upon situations when complete strangers will need an ally or advocate. Give in to human compassion and social justice and stand with them. Let the world know that you will always give, give in when it comes to doing the right thing. Letting people know that they matter is important. In everything else, if something really matters to you, give it all that you've got. If people say you can't do it or you hit roadblocks and setbacks at every turner, 
turn, don't quit. Give it all and you've got this. Find out what you need. Seek out help. Leave no stone unturned. You will succeed. You can do it. If it is important, don't back down. You have the power to create the life that you want to have. You're leaving high school and starting the new chapter in your life. You need to know that we, are, we all believe in you and we know that you can do this and we are all immensely proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2020. We wish you all the best. As you head off on your new adventures, go see the world, question the actions of leaders, stand up for those who need an ally, accomplish great things, and be really good people. And remember, you've got this. Congratulations. Congratulations to the class of 2020. 2020, how quickly it feels like we got here. And at the same time, how unique and unexpected the end of this journey has been. A journey that began in September of 2016 when you arrived at Morton Collegiate. For many of you at that time, graduation was not even a thought on your minds. But I promise you, for the staff and families here tonight, we have all known today was coming. And its arrival brings so many feelings, pride, joy, apprehension, worry, and most often, reflection. When Jordan and Nick and I moved to Morden in 2011, I was at the time hired as the vocational instructor for the Backstage Theatre program. One of the courses I taught was a grade 12 course called Event Management. As part of that class, we would talk about our school. What did the students love about Morden Collegiate? And what did they feel like we could improve? There were many things they loved about our school, and the one thing they really wished they could change was our school spirit. How could we find a way to break down the social walls between students and create better relationships between our kids? Their answer, increase our thunder spirit. To make this school a place where students looked out for each other, even if they were in a different friend group or in a different grade. My class imagined a school where being a student at Morden Collegiate was all that was required to belong, where Thunder Pride meant something to everyone. That was the class that came up with the idea of Survivor Challenge. You were only in middle school during those first few years of Survivor Challenge, and some of you had older brothers or sisters in high school at the time, and you may have heard stories water balloon fights, sponge bucket races, red versus black versus blue, a high school field activity with bleachers. The year before you arrived into our school at grade nine, the student council that year decided that it was time to introduce a grade wars event for the first time, and that survival challenge would now be a final competition in a school year's worth of challenges. When you arrived, you were niners, babies, the freshmen. High school etiquette would say that you had a role to play that was to be demure and intimidated. Don't even think about sitting on the grade 12 bench. But that was not you. You came in with a storm, a storm filled with thunder pride. Our grade wars days were filled with blue and our yearbook and school calendars are scattered with your school spirit and the school spirit that you inspired in other grades. In four years, you realized the dream that my grade 12 class had so many years before hoped would come true. You changed our school. You made it a place where the expectation is acceptance, fun, and inclusion. We are and will forevermore be a better place because you were here. And that is who you are, class of 2020. You make a difference. You're, you face challenges head on with your eyes open and your heart strong. Your support for each other and you celebrate each other. You have been a joy to share this school with and you will continue 
to change the world for the better wherever you go and whatever adventures lie ahead. You have already made us so proud. And finally, you, our graduating class of 2020, you came, you saw, and you were victorious in 2017, 2018, and 2019 in claiming the Great Wars title. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to award to the graduating class of 2020 their fourth straight win of the 2020 Grade Wars Challenge. Congratulations, class of 2020. We would now like to introduce Kim Clausen to bring well wishes to the graduating class on behalf of the families. Hi, everyone. I have the honor to speak to you on behalf of all the parents that are alongside each of their graduates today. I hope to represent some of our thoughts and reflections on the mixed emotions that we carry on seeing our daughters and our sons graduate from Morden Collegiate. Graduates, first, congratulations. We are so proud of you. We recognize that you are more mature, more aware, more tolerant, more caring, more educated, more inquisitive, and you have formed and sustained great friendships over the years. You are so well equipped for the journey to do remarkable and rewarding things and to grow into true leadership roles within our wider community. Your teachers have poured into you throughout the years with this moment etched in their minds. As parents, we are thankful for the creative, supportive leadership the teachers and EAs have demonstrated. This year, no one could have prepared or imagined the changes and adventures that we would all be experiencing, yet here we are. We thought as parents and guardians that this year was supposed to be about grappling with our emotions. It feels like yesterday that we watched you in kindergarten making a new friend or throwing food during lunch in class, running in the hallways or down the halls. We remember your first dance, taking a stand against hunger in the community, the school picnics, the carnivals, so many highlights we will remember. We were preparing ourselves for the traditions, skip day, dress shopping, suit buying, the ceremony, walking across the stage, sweating in the arena, safe grad and parties with friends, provincials, and then history found you. History found you and in response, you didn't give up. You faced the strange new normal. You asked for support and tried new ways to learn. Some days were harder than others with technology issues and motivation needing to be found to work remotely. We have all had to learn as learning as a lifelong process. And if we meet each day with openness, curiosity, and valuing others, we cannot help but overcome any adversity. Kiddos, people make things happen. You can be a person who creates change with one small kind gesture. One small decision can make a huge impact. Think of the pebble in the river or the lake and watch that ripple effect. As unique young people, you know something powerful, that you have been tested and you did not falter. You kept going. And although you're entering a very different world than the one that you were expecting, it's a world that needs you. And because a parent's speech is supposed to contain some kind of essential information, some piece of wisdom passed down from an aged speaker to a youthful listener, here it is. Nothing in life is better than being needed. So do something. Share your voice. It matters. Vote by being informed. Follow your passions. When, where, and how this looks will be as unique 
as you are. The point is, you are needed. You matter. So make the one small kind gesture, one small decision, and do something. I know, and your parents and family and your teachers know, that you are ready for what lies ahead. Because you are the great class of 2020, and you did not give up. Remember, we are all in this together. Congratulations. We would now like to introduce McKenna Nichols to deliver thanks to the families on behalf of the graduating class. To start, I'd like to thank my fellow classmates for the opportunity to give thanks to our parents and guardians on behalf of the 2020 graduating class. Graduates, I know we all come from different parenting backgrounds, but the one thing we share are people that nurtured, cared, and worked hard to teach us right from wrong. Mothers and fathers, siblings and grandparents, extended family and guardians, you have succeeded in the journey that placed us here today. You've been by, behind us every step of the way. At times, you stepped in and advocated for us, and at others, you used to quietly and foster our independence. On behalf of our class, we'd like to say thank you for being by our side from our first day of school to the final day of grade 12. To my classmates, whoever may be by your side today, make sure to celebrate them too. We have so many memories along the way. First came kindergarten to grade four. Mums, thank you for holding our hands and then letting them go on our first day of kindergarten. You held back your tears until the front doors closed behind us. Parents, thank you for packing our lunches for the field trips we took to the Winnipeg Zoo, Freshman's Museum, Lower Fort Gary, and IMAX. Maybe next time you could pack more treats than veggies. Mums, thank you for organizing our backpacks at the door each night along with our jackets and shoes and placing our clothes on our beds for the next day of school long after we'd fallen asleep that night. Parents, thank you for attending our parent-teacher nights and sitting by our side while we explained our portfolio to you. Our fridge never looked so good with artwork as it did in kindergarten. Then we arrived at the middle school. Dads, grandpas, uncles, and brothers. Thank you for making me believe that my grade five simple machine project was all me. My teacher said she loved your work. Moms, grandpas, and sisters. Yes, thank you for welcoming my friends over to our home, helping us do our makeup and hair, ordering pizza, and taking as many pictures as you could before those awkward junior high dances. No, you cannot chaperone more than once and our dance while you are there. Thank you for waiting in the parking lot to pick us up when the dance was done. Dads, uncles, and brothers, thank you for your love of sports, both in watching and playing them. You taught us the importance of teamwork, to win with humility, to lose with dignity, and to suck it up and get back out there when we were hurt. Today is a special day, and looking back, our grade 8 graduation was the end and beginning of a new chapter. Everything changed once we left the dungeon of the grade 8 hallway. Kindness, sharing, caring, and honesty remained and flourished into independence, maturity, respect, and responsibility. Then we entered the halls of Morning Collegiate. Mums, thank you for encouraging us to be creative and open-minded when we were selecting our elective courses. Drama, art, band, choir, woodworking, food nutrition, to name a few. This would become a part of our identity. Dads, thank you for the countless hours you spent at the kitchen table learning your high school math all over again. You passed with flying colors this time. Mums and dads, thank you for hiding your fear in the passenger seat during those 40 hours of driver's ed. Check your mirrors, 10 and 2, slow down when it's icy, turn the radio down, and drive safe. Our reminders engraved in our heads indefinitely. Parents, thank you for being strict with your rules and raising your voice when you receive low marks on a report card. You knew I had it in me to do better. Mums, thank you for helping your girls realize the true value of friendship, for knowing when we were to blame and it was our turn to apologize. Parents, thank you for educating your sons the importance of personal hygiene and for teaching them manners and to act like gentlemen in hopes one day it would stick. Grandparents, thank you for all those moments of advice, the hugs, the smiles, the cards, and the small gifts to celebrate our accomplishments. When writing this speech, it came to mind that I wanted to include the voices of others. It's not only a thanks from myself, but from all of us who have you to be grateful for. I called upon my classmates to share some thoughts or words about their parents. These are a few of their remarks. Thank you for your support, your inspiration. Thank you for telling me not to be so hard on myself when I something didn't go well. Thank you for always being there for me. Thank you for teaching me to always try my best in school, to be myself, and to not care what others think of me. And who I am today is because of you. As adults, you have anticipated this day for the past 12 years, and for a few of us, you were sure it, wouldn't, it would take more. Know that you have inspired, challenged, and taught us by example. Your experience, wisdom, and compassion are much more important to us now than they were in our younger years. You celebrate our accomplishments and successes, support in our disappointments and failures, and love without limit. 
As we grow and mature, we will continue to understand the importance of appreciating all that you do. Lastly, to all the adults who share this special occasion with us, I'd like to leave you with these words. Although I'm all grown and ready to be on my own, my heart will always be tied to home. Thank you. We would now like to introduce Mr. Chris Chiapetta to bring well wishes to the graduating class on behalf of the staff at Western School Division. Get comfortable. This is going to be a long one. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to say how honored I was to simply be nominated by the graduating class of this year. Any of the people nominated would have done a great job. It's an incredible accomplishment, having worked on something for 12 plus years and completing it throughout all the challenges and struggles. Remember, the skills that brought you to this point, things like your discipline, your passion, your commitment, these are skills to nurture as they will take you far in life. It is easy to give up in the face of a new challenge, but by using these skills, you can be successful in your future endeavors. I would like to highlight a couple of the great achievements of this group. Many in this group have a strong sense of service by raising money to donate to various charities, both local and around the world. Our hockey team yearly contributes to Christmas cheer. We have our music and art programs fundraise money each semester to donate to a worthy charity of their choice. And we have, of course, our clubs that every year have long been contributors to a variety of charities. We've had students compete at some of the highest levels of debate, both in French and in English. We've had students compete in RRTVA competitions throughout Manitoba and potentially throughout Canada. And some of you have been working nearly full-time jobs at night, helping your families out in your spare time and still managing to find success in school. There are many more accomplishments that I know I am forgetting and for that I apologize. Over the years, you've all had such diverse experiences, be they playing on sports teams, engaging in music, joining a variety of clubs, meeting new potentially lifelong friends, and learning more about yourself, such as your likes, and definitely some of your dislikes. Now for the first time though, you are about to embark on something dramatically different from your school experience. Throughout all the changes and uncertainty, you have learned about resilience, you have learned about strength from all the people around you, including the staff in your schools. You have learned about caring, hard work, responsibility, and maybe just a little bit of how to get the job done in somewhat creative ways, such as using that math app that does your math homework for you or potentially using Sparknotes or Wikipedia to help you with those research papers. It was a pleasure to have met you, and the school will not be the same without all of your faces crowding through the halls, even if in grade nine you formed those silly little clusters of safety that blocked up the hallway for everybody else in the school. Make sure you thank your families, your friends, and your teachers. We all worked incredibly hard to make sure you had the best possible chance of being successful. As teachers, we always hope to see you all grow and do your best, whatever that may be. It has been a pleasure to work with you all, and if you want to see a few teachers crying in the corner somewhere, make sure you come back in the middle of September to visit. While your classes may have ended very differently than any of us expected, you all had the character and perseverance to push through and succeed. This graduating class will have an amazing story to tell in the coming years, and while it may not have been an ideal graduation coming through the gym and on video like this, this is an experience that, you're, that will be unique to your class and your class alone. Just remember, struggle builds character. Congratulations to the class of 2020, and good luck in the future. We would now like to introduce Cassidy Curry to deliver thanks to the staff of Western School Division on behalf of the graduating class. Graduates, staff, friends, and family, it is my privilege today to share with you on behalf of all the grads a toast to the staff of Western School Division. Every single staff member of WSD has helped us all get to this day. To the bus drivers who drove us to school on the minus 30 days and on our field trips when it felt like plus 30. To the EAs that were always willing to lend us a helping hand and when we needed to finish that assignment on time. Thank you to the custodial staff who woke up at the crack of dawn to shovel snow so we can get into the school. To the cafeteria ladies who always had our first break snack warm and ready for us. To the office staff that called our parents when we forgot our lunches in early years and that kept us all on track and made sure we were where we needed to be. And to our teachers. In early years, you held our hands when we were sad or scared. In the middle years, you were patient with us as we went through growth spurts and you still came to work every day, even when we didn't quite know yet how to use deodorant. And finally, to our high school teachers, who held our hands virtually with the passing of our dear friend and fellow graduate. 
You have shown us the character and responsibility it takes to become adults. We would not be here today without every single one of you. So thank you staff for being there and doing what needs to be done. We know we didn't always give you an easy time with all of our attitude when, assign when given assignments and talking when it was time to work. I'm honestly not sure how you put up with us for so long. Having said that, we are grateful for everything that you have taught us beyond the classroom. Many of us have learned that showing up 10 minutes late with a coffee for your teacher means you're suddenly not that late anymore. We now know that asking to go to the bathroom five minutes into class is as useless as asking Mr. Dirksen a question during a test. Yeah, we know Mr. Dirksen, it's our call. We are lucky to have made so many connections with different staff members. Whether it was a coach, a teacher, a guidance counselor, or even our administrators, those connections matter and you've all made a huge impact on our lives. Thank you for spending your lunch hours teaching us when we couldn't quite get it the first time around. We also thank you for your time volunteering to coach, lead, and supervise activities and events that have allowed us to grow outside of the classroom. You were there encouraging us and cheering us on, and we noticed. Those events were some of our most memorable, and we would not have been possible without you. To our French teachers, Merci d'avoir patienté avec nous car nous avons appris la différence entre avoir et être. Je voudrais aussi dire que nous pensons à Madame Zacharias en ces temps difficiles et nous lui souhaitons un prompt rétablissement. To Ms. Ben and Ms. Sigurdsson, our biggest cheerleaders, emphasis on the leaders. As a young woman making her way into the big scary world, you have showed us all what it looks like to be strong, independent women. Thank you for doing the most and leading the staff through a wonderful COVID grad. We feel so lucky to have the staff of WSD supporting us on our transition into real life. COVID may have taken the last few months away from us at Morden Collegiate, but it can't ever take away the memories we made with the staff in Western School Division. Please honk your horn and join me in thanking the staff of Western School Division. Well, graduates, the time has come to conclude our program here this evening. Every year at this time, we take a moment to thank the many people who have helped put this graduation together. This year, the list is so very long as so many people came together to make sure you had a celebration together. Much of the organizing of this ceremony is the result of the dedication of many people. We would like to recognize the following. Morden Collegiate staff for their support and help with the setup and various aspects of our recording of the ceremony and presentation at the drive-in this evening. There is so much work that goes on behind the scenes to ensure a successful day on a day like today. Thank you to every one of our MCI staff members for helping make this a great event. The Nelsons and the Stardust Theatre staff for creating a safe venue for us to celebrate together. To Ms. Kalinowski, Mrs. Bates, and Ms. Duick, our grad sponsors, who ensured your packages were organized and delivered and to Checker Signs, who supported us with the lawn signs. To Ms. Fenn, Mr. Makareg, Ms. Hoytink, Image Productions, and the local fire department for the organization, design, creation, and installation of the grad banners distributed downtown, along with Access Credit Union for their generous sponsorship to help offset the costs of those banners. To the Access Event Center for continuing to support our graduation from afar in loaning equipment for our virtual convocation. To Mr. Macraig and Ms. Hoytink, this movie would not be possible without your creativity and time above and beyond your teaching responsibilities. We are very grateful. And to the graduates and your families for being willing to take this new ride with us as we journeyed together through the final months of your senior year. Please join us in thanking all of these people. And now is the time to say good night. Be well, be safe, and all the best on your amazing journey ahead. Good night. Twelves, congratulations. It's been a pleasure to help you out with grad this year. Um, even though it's not the grad you want, 
And a special shout out to the Great 12 Family Studies students. I really enjoyed teaching you, even if it's a little bit virtually uh, this last semester. So congratulations, guys. Thanks. Congratulations, class. Wish you all the best. Don't forget to wash your hands sometimes. Hi, 2020 grads. Congratulations. Uh, what a crazy, weird, strange year it has been. And I just want to say congratulations and all the best. Um, I hope next year is a little bit more normal for you and I hope you guys do great things. Congrats. Congratulations. Awesome work. And I wish you all the best. Grads, I wish you guys the very best because you are the very best. Take care. Bye. Hi, grads. The higher we fly, the farther we go, the closer we are to each other. The darker the night, the brighter the stars. In peace go my sisters and brothers. Happy graduation, you guys. Good luck in the future. Please come back and visit us. Happy trails. Congratulations, grads of 2020. How amazing is it? You're done. I have had the pleasure of coaching a lot of you and teaching most of you, and I wish you all the very best in your future endeavors. Good luck. Congratulations, class of 2020. Just know that we're rooting for you, and uh, trust your intuition as you go out into the world, and don't fear trying new things. We'll miss you. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm so incredibly proud of all of you and going to miss you like crazy. Uh, my one wish for you guys is that you all end up being better cooks than you were in class. Hey, grads of 2020, congratulations on your huge accomplishment. Wishing you all the best in the future and hope to see you around. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Hey, grads of 2020, uh, Mr. Sloan here, wishing you uh, all the best in the future and congr congratulations on your achievements. Congratulations, grads, on your graduation of 2020. I wish you all the best in anything you choose to do next. Hey, class of 2020, congrats. I'm super proud of you. I'm going to miss you. I wish you all the best in the future and go Team Blue. See ya. Hi class of 2020, Ms. Hoytink here. Uh, for the last four days, we've been filming your convocation and we just finished. Uh, this has been some of the best four days I've had in the last couple months because it made me realize how much I've missed your laughter and just your energy in the hallways and in the building. Uh, I hope you guys go out there and you rock it. Uh, congratulations. Hi everybody, it's graduation day, so that's good news. Um, and here is some good news. I received a text from a parent yesterday and it said, thank you for everything. I believe that we have been so fortunate to have an amazing village. And if that isn't the truth right there, I don't know what is. I've been lucky enough to film your graduation with Miss Hoytink over the last few days and see firsthand what kind of village has supported you over the past 13 plus years. Some of you have seen these next two videos that I'm about to show uh, on Instagram and that they just show some of your teachers putting in some extra work because uh, they want to make your grad special and because we care. So please come by back to the school and say hi anytime. Teachers will never admit it, but we love it when you come back to the school and say hi. Um, and the third video that you probably that you haven't seen yet brings that village together brings us all together and remember we're all here to support you and we can't wait to see what you do because we want the best for you.